what's up hello my name is Emma and today I am giving you guys my January book haul in the month of January I have acquired 15 new books which I'm really happy with I didn't buy an absurd amount of books this month you know for most of 2017 the majority of my book hauls were like 20 plus books so I feel like I've been dwindling down a little bit and it's been making me feel really good I also am clearly in a new location today I just got this new love seat for my office and I couldn't resist filming a video on it immediately this little like book nook area Area is not totally done yet I have a lot of pillows and blankets and lights and stuff to go on the walls that will be coming soon but you know all this stuff is just from my room at the moment and I'm kind of living for it this couch is like really really comfortable so in the beginning of the month I actually had the amazing opportunity to moderate the launch event for nice try Jane Center by Leanne Olkay at Books of Wonder I vlogged that whole day and I had a great great time so if you're interested in checking out that vlog I will leave it linked below so the first book I bought at that event is obviously nice try Jane Center by Leanne Olkay she signed it and I met her and she is so so wonderful I actually got to read nice try Jane Center back in 2017 and it was on my list of favorites of the year because I love this book so much. So our main character's name is Jean and she has recently been expelled from her high school as a result of a depressive suicidal episode that she had experienced. So she is currently taking classes at her local community college which she's not very excited about until she joins a local campus run reality show called House of Orange. So Jane moves out of her very religious restricted household that she has been trying to escape for a very long time. She's on her own, she's taking college classes, she's living with a bunch of other people, and she's also on a reality show where every week she has to compete different challenges to see if she can stay on the show to win a used car. Nice Try Jane Sinner is seriously so, so good. I know I related a lot to this book, and if there is a book that is YA that takes place in college as opposed to high school, I am always so sold with it. When I was at the Nice Try Jane Sinner event, Leanne described her book as community meets big brother where Daria is the narrator and I feel like there is no better way to describe this book. If you have not read Nice Try Jane Sinner yet I would highly highly recommend it. Next book I got at that signing is Now Is Everything by Amy Giles. Now Is Everything is a story that deals with child abuse. Our main character's name is Hadley and she is the perfect student, the perfect daughter, and she is trying relentlessly to protect her younger sister from her father's abuse. Hadley starts to date a boy named Charlie and as their relationship grows the violence at home increases and and there is a big accident, which I believe at the book signing they said is a plane crash. So now as everything is told in alternating chapters between what happened before the crash and now when Hadley is finally starting to open up about her story. And it just sounds so freaking amazing. You guys know that books that deal with mental illness are kind of my thing, but I definitely want to start delving into more stories that deal with other mental health issues and things that contribute to it, such as abuse, assault, addiction, all of those sorts of things. So Now Is Everything is definitely a book I am planning on reading very soon and I really hope it's good. So the final book that I got at that signing and the final author that I met is Alyssa Scheinmel for her newest released R.I.P. Eliza Hart. Our main character's name is Ellie and her longtime childhood best friend has just recently been found dead at the bottom of a cliff while they are at boarding school. Ellie had spent some time trying to rekindle her old relationship with Eliza before she died but unfortunately Eliza never reciprocated which has led to a lot of the other people at their school thinking that Ellie might have something to do with Eliza's death. So it definitely has a mystery element to it that I'm very interested in because it is all about Ellie uncovering the truth and clearing her name. But Ellie does also deal with claustrophobia, which is an issue that's not ever really touched upon in books. So I'm also really anticipating this read and I think it's one that's like perfect for me. This month I received a lovely package from Soho Teen. So thank you so much to Soho for sending me a copy of Love, Hate, and Other Filters by Samira Ahmed. I am sure you guys have heard me talking about this book because it has been one of my most anticipated of the year. Love, Hate, and Other Filters follows a girl named Maya who is currently deciding on if she wants to stay at home in Chicago and go to college to fulfill her parents' dreams for her or if she wants to pack up and go off to film school to pursue her dreams of becoming a filmmaker. While Maya is trying to figure things out for herself, there is a terrorist attack and unfortunately the prime suspect of that investigation shares Maya's last name. So it is the story of Maya's experience in a world of Islamophobia where the people that she has grown up with all of these years are suddenly turning on her, assuming that she has some connection to this man that she's never met in her entire life. It sounds really gripping and I know it is going to be an emotional 
emotional heavy read, which is just what I love in my contemporaries, so I cannot wait to read it. Thank you so much to Soho Teen for sending it to me. It is definitely going to be one of the very next books on my TBR. Then this month I got a few lovely gifts from my very best friend Michael from Michael Book Lion, who does spoil me way more than I deserve, so thank you so much to Michael for giving me these two books. The first is I'll Give You the Sun by, is it Jandy Nelson? Yes it is, I'm correct. This book has been all over booktube since it first came out. Everyone loves it and I am like the last person to read it, so when Michael and I were in the Strand one day he was like, this is five dollars, I'm getting it for you. So thank you so much Michael. All I really know about I'll Give You the Sun is that it follows these twin siblings Noah and Jude and in the past they have been the best of friends, totally inseparable, but years Years later something has happened where they are barely speaking to each other and it says the early years are Noah's to tell and the later years are Jude's and it is just a story of them trying to see if they can find their ways back to each other because each is only one half of the story. I know before I even upload this video I'm going to get a million comments that say you need to read I'll Give You the Sun. It's amazing. I have heard such great things about it and I'm definitely anticipating reading it. And then the next book that Michael so kindly gifted to me is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway which is actually the National Book Award winner. So I don't know much about Far From the Tree but I do know that it deals with adoption. Our main character's name is Grace and she goes off to find her two biological siblings, her older brother and her younger sister. So this book is told from the perspectives of Grace, Maya, and Joe Quinn and all three of these people have never met before and they have totally different lives behind them but they're all kind of colliding at once. While Grace is an adoptive child she becomes pregnant at 16 and gives up her own baby for adoption and that is what really inspires her to go seek out these two biological family members. Maya is the younger sister who doesn't feel like she has ever really fit in with her adoptive family but as she finds her two new siblings things in her adoptive family start to explode and the older brother Joe Quinn has no interest in forming a relationship with his biological siblings as he is the only of them that was never put up for adoption and grew up in the foster care system where he has really learned to be closed off to protect himself so it sounds like a really interesting book about all these different family and sibling dynamics which is something I'm always always interested in in my so I think this will also be another amazing read so thank you so much to Michael for gifting it to me. So the next book on my haul was sent to me by Penguin as well as Orion Pictures and that is Every Day by David Levithan so thank you so much for sending this to me. So our main character's name I believe is Rhiannon and she falls in love with a soul named A who wakes up in a different body every single day. Rhiannon and A work each day to find each other where A will be in a different person's body every single day and I feel like the trailer does a way better job of explaining this book than I possibly could so I will link it below because this movie and this book sound absolutely fantastic. Every Day has been like low-key on my TBR for a very long time but I never really knew what it was about. It sounds so fantastic and the film looks so good and I'm really really excited for it. I know that Every Day has been a beloved book for a very long time for so many people and I definitely feel like it's finally time to give into the hype. I'm very excited to read it. So thank you again to Penguin and Orion Pictures for sending this to me. And do not forget about the everyday movie that is coming out this February 23rd because you know I will be there to watch this one. So this month I got a handful of books from the lovely Harper Collins. So thank you so much to Harper for sending me these books. Two of them are my like biggest anticipated reads of this year and another one is one I recently read and loved so much. So thank you so much for sending it to me. The first is Everless by Sarah Holland which just recently came out and it is definitely an interesting fantasy book that I really want to read. Our main character's name is Jules and she lives in a world where the wealthy control time. Time is really a currency and Jules and her family are running out of it. Jules and her father used to be the servants at an estate named Everless which served the Gertling family and years later after they have been driven away from that occupation Jules has come back in order to earn more time for her and her father. So as Jules is revisiting this place where she grew up and she has many childhood memories things start to change and she starts to make sense of things that she didn't recognize when she she was younger and interact with the younger sons of the Gertlings and it just sounds like a really really interesting concept for a YA fantasy story that I'm excited to read. The next book Harper sent to me is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson which I just finished yesterday and it was so freaking good I can't wait to talk about it in my wrap up. Truly Devious takes place at this school called Ellingham Academy where essentially gifted students are invited to learn for free and they can learn whatever it is that they want. It was founded by this man named Albert Ellingham who used to live at the school but unfortunately short after its opening his wife and daughter were kidnapped 
kidnapped and later found dead. Many, many years later, our main character's name is Stevie and she's been accepted to Ellingham Academy in order to study true crime, where she's particularly invested in Ellingham Academy because of the murders. She wants to solve them. So this book takes place some in the present time where Stevie's at school and some in 1936, before, after, and during these kidnappings. And essentially, the murderer who has been named Truly Devious from back in 1936 has made a surprise return while she is at school and Stevie has to solve the crime. If you like mysteries in YA, you have to read it. I love it so, so much and I cannot wait for book two because it is going to be a series, which makes me even more excited. So the next book that Harper sent to me is Ink Mistress by Audrey Coulthurst, which is a prequel to A Fire and Stars, which was one of my favorite books last year. Our main character her name is Azra and she has the ability to control the future by writing in her blood. Because of this dark and dangerous secret, Azra lives up in the mountains away from civilization other than a girl named Ina who is immortal that she loves. Azra has led a pretty peaceful life up until this point when bandits have threatened to invade Ina's home village and when they go to the king he refuses to help. Because of this Azra tries to use her magic to help Ina but unfortunately the bandits invade and Ina's family is killed. As Ina does not know that Azra is at fault for her family's death, she swears vengeance on the king and Azra has to follow Aina all across the kingdom through these dangerous treacherous games in order to stop her. I'm so excited for this book. A Fire in the Stars is literally one of my favorite fantasy books of all time and although you definitely do not need to read A Fire in the Stars to read Ink Mistress, the plot of this story sounds so fantastic and I'm always all about more bisexual protagonists in science fiction fantasy so I know Ink Mistress is going to be amazing and I can't wait to read it so thank you so much to Harper for sending it to me. Ink Mistress comes out on March 6th and this is a release you definitely don't want to miss. And the final book that Harper sent me this month is Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry, which comes out this August. I think quite possibly this is one of my most anticipated releases of this year from an author I've never read from before. It is so freaking amazing, this synopsis. Our main character's name is Michael and he is an atheist that is being forced to go to a Catholic school as his family has just recently moved. So while Michael is seeking out a new friend, hopefully a non-believer at that, he thinks he has found one in a girl named Lucy who challenges a teacher in class but he finds out that Lucy is not a non-believer, she wants to be a priest. Lucy ends up introducing Michael to a group of outcasts at their Catholic school, which they call themselves Heretics Anonymous. To give you an idea of some of the other characters in this novel, it says, in Heretics Anonymous, Michael can be an atheist, Lucy can be an outspoken feminist, Abby can be Jewish and gay, Max can wear whatever he wants, and Eden can practice paganism. So these are not the typical people you would see voluntarily going to Catholic school, not necessarily, but they are definitely the people that are viewed as outcasts from other students and teachers. So as Michael is the newest member of Heretics Anonymous, he believes that they have the power to be so much more than just a silent society as outcasts and they believe that they can be rebels who challenge the school's hypocrisies. Essentially, one of their missions goes a little too far and Michael has put himself as well as the other heretics at risk and this book just sounds so good. I want to die. I can't wait to read it. I'm literally so hyped. I can't wait to read it. I expect I'm absolutely going to love it and I actually met Katie Henry at the Zenith book signing that just happened this past month. Sweetest woman. I had the best time talking to her and I know I'm going to love her book. So thank you so much to Harper for putting this in my hands. I cannot wait to tell you guys how much I will absolutely love it. So the next book was actually sent to me personally by the author, which is so sweet, and that is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. So thank you so much to Sarah for sending me your book. I don't know if anyone remembers, I mentioned this book in my video on like 2017 mental health fiction releases as it deals with a main character who is a selective mute. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that book originally came out in the UK and it wasn't coming out in America until this year. As I said, her main character's name is Steffi and she's a selective mute, meaning that in particular situations, her anxiety is so crippling that she's not able to speak. A new boy comes to her school named Reese who is deaf and as Steffi has a basic understanding of American and sign language, she is assigned to help him adjust to school. From there they form a friendship and what I assume to be a relationship and it just sounds like such a wonderful sweet story. I actually took American Sign Language my last semester of college and I really loved it and I know a book that is focused
focused on that. Selective mutism is never talked about and people don't even know what it is and we definitely do not have enough characters in YA that are deaf or use American Sign Language. So I feel like this book has so many elements that I am just really excited to read about and I can't wait. So thank you so much to Sarah for sending me your book. I know I'm going to love it. The next book I received this month is also from a publisher. This one is from HMH Teen and it is Brightly Burning by Alexa Doan. Doan, Danae, I'm so sorry. I actually really wanted to get this book at Y'all Fest, but it is so highly anticipated that HMH Teen ran out at their booth, so I'm so happy I got an advanced copy. Brightly Burning comes out on May 1st of this year, and it is essentially a science fiction retelling of Jane Eyre. Our main character's name is Stella, who has recently quit her job as an engineer to become a pilot on a private ship, and she's really excited about the opportunity to travel the stars with all of the books she could possibly want. It says, but no one warned Stella that the ship seemed to be haunted, nor that it may be involved in a conspiracy that could topple the entire interstellar fleet. Brightly Burning is a debut novel that says is perfect for fans of Marissa Meyer and Amy Kaufman, and it actually turns out that the author is also a YouTuber, which is like always cool, always down to support the YouTube community. I've heard really, really great things about this release, and I have been getting more into science fiction lately, which is like not a thing that has happened for a very long time, so I'm really excited to read this one. Thanks so much to Age of 18 for sending it to me. I have two books left, one more that was sent to me by a publisher and one more that I bought this month. And the final book that I bought this month is one that I got myself because although I have been trying to limit the amount of books that I buy every month, I did have a coupon for Barnes & Noble and I went four times during the week of the Buy New Bibliothon and I was like, it's time for me to get something new. So I decided to pick up Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. I've had a lot of people recommend this book to me because it is a YA mystery thriller which I'm loving right now and I always have more that I want to read. Our main character's name is Casey and she is the new girl in town. While Casey is trying to move on from her past with her mother, she does quickly find a friend group at school which unfortunately does become very distant very quickly and she's not invited to the biggest party of the year which is strange. But Casey never gets the chance to ask her friend Bailey why she wasn't invited because Bailey never makes it home from that party. So I don't know if she is missing, if she's kidnapped, if she's dead. I don't really know, but it sounds like a very interesting story that I've heard almost nothing but good things about that I'm really excited to read. So that really concludes my January book haul. I have so many new exciting books to read that I am super, super pumped about. I know that there is like this weird complaint that goes around the outskirts of the booktube community sometimes where people complain that booktubers read new releases, but I feel like I spent so much of the first half of my booktube journey trying to catch up with what everyone was reading and reading all of the books that I had missed out on for so many years that I really want 2018 to be a big year of reading new releases for myself. There are just so many amazing stories coming out, so many new to me stories that I haven't read yet that I am really, really excited for. Definitely let me know in the comments below what was your favorite book that you bought, received, or even just read in the month of January. I would love to know. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for a new one. Bye!